Test analysis. First of all, a test manager should know that there are four software test phases. Test analysis, test design, test implementation, and test execution. It is very important that we also do not forget about test planning and test closure. But in this video, we are going to focus on test analysis and test design. Test analysis is the process of analyzing the test basis and defining the test objectives. Now, what is the test basis? This is simple and you should focus on this during the ISTQB foundation. The test basis represents all documents from which the requirements of a component or system can be inferred. Let's translate that. Test analysis covers what is to be tested in the form of test conditions. And this area, or let's say this phase, can start as soon as the test basis for each test level is ready. So do not forget test analysis, test design, test implementation, and test execution are applied for each test level. Now, when we are looking at test analysis, we should consider the fact that it can go in parallel, iteratively or sequentially with test design. In most of the cases, they either go hand in hand or in, uh, in sequence. The following are a set of items that we should consider for the test analysis phase. First of all, we need to look at the level of testing that is required for each specific test level that we have for our product or for our project. For example, the level of detail and quality of the test basis is a driver that shows what is the detail requirement that we need to implement during our test analysis. Besides this, the system or the software complexity and the development life cycle that we use for our project or for our product is very important because this will help us establish again the level of detail for test analysis or we can even try to assess if it makes sense to merge test analysis with test design. Again, the product or the project risks are a big factor in this but also the relationship between the test basis Mainly here, I'm referring to what is to be tested and how it is to be tested. Besides these factors, we should always consider the test management tool that we want to use. And we should start thinking of the test management tool during test analysis. We should assess the level of maturity of the overall test process and the skills and knowledge that we will require during test analysis, design, implementation, and execution. Decide the level at which test design and other test work products are specified and make sure that the stakeholders are available for consultation. I know this was a long list for uh, the test analysis, but these are factors that you should always consider during this stage. And now let's move to test uh, design. During this design, we will discuss about items or events of a component or system that could be verified by one or more test cases. But if I translate that, this covers how something is to be tested by identifying test cases with stepwise elaboration for the test condition. We start with test analysis, we define those test conditions, then we proceed with the step level details during test design, and we always use the test basis, as this is the main identifier and the main driver for our test conditions and test cases. The techniques that we define in the overall test strategy that have to be used for both test analysis and test design. If we're looking at a given test level, we need to make sure that test conditions are identified and that we have enough information available to enable the production of test cases. In other words, these test cases represent a set of input values, execution preconditions, expected results, 
and execution post conditions developed for a particular objective of the test condition that has been defined during test analysis. For example, this test condition can relate to a program path or can verify compliance with a specific requirement or with a specific regulation. Although I said earlier that we can merge test analysis with test design, it is very important to look at the whole perspective. For example, for higher levels of testing like system test or acceptance test, it is most likely that the two should be separated. But when we are looking at component and integration test levels, it might make sense to consolidate the two together and move forward with a single stage covering test analysis and test design, especially when we are using an iterative approach. Now, do not forget, we mentioned test analysis and test design. They are going to be followed by test implementation and test execution. But test planning is very important and also is test closure. The monitoring and control that we define during test planning needs to be exercised also within test analysis and test design. Don't forget, we need to have a proper plan that will consider these two stages and we need to keep our eyes for when the actuals deviate from the plan so that we can exercise proper test control. In the next video, we are going to cover test implementation and test execution.